So recently, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, admitted to eating fish, even though he's been called vegan and has even referred to himself as being plant-based. Now, rather predictably, this event was called Fishgate. Now, from looking through the reactions to Fishgate, it seems like most of the commentary around it has come from Eric Adams' political opponents, who are trying to weaponize Fishgate as a means to try and portray him as not being true to his word or not being trustworthy. Now, we also have to bear in mind that Fishgate came about at the same time as Eric Adams was rolling out his new vegan school meal programs across New York City. So from a political perspective, it was very topical. However, whilst most of the commentary was political, I did come across this article from Vox, which is trying to make the case that vegans are too strict with their ideology and we should actually be loosening the definition of veganism because I guess if Eric Adams orders fish in a restaurant, it's because vegans are too strict. Hey everyone, sorry to interject and interrupt myself, but I just want to tell you all about Wild Deodorant because Wild Deodorant have very kindly decided to support my channel and sponsor today's video. Wild is a cruelty-free, zero-waste vegan company and they send out plastic-free and compostable refills, which means that once you've bought the reusable deodorant case, you can then have plastic-free refills for life. So because of this, I've been using Wild Deodorant myself for about a month or so, and I really like it, and I also really like the scents, in particular the sea salt and fresh cotton, and the sandalwood and patchouli. It's super convenient as you can simply set up a subscription, which means that Wild will just send out the plastic-free compostable refills straight to your door. And as you can see from mine, you can even get your name engraved on the deodorant case as well, which is great if there's more than one of you who has subscribed to Wild. So if Wild while deodorant sounds good to you, then you can use the code ED20 to get 20% off wild products for a limited time only. All right, then let's get back to the video. But again, just a big thank you to Wild for sponsoring today's video. So let's dive in right now and take a look at this concept of loosening the definition of veganism. But before I tell you my thoughts, let's take a look at what the writer says, because I think it's only fair that we take a look at their arguments and see why they believe that we should loosen the definition of veganism. So the article starts by referencing a 2014 study that says that 84% of vegans and vegetarians go back to eating meat. Firstly, this was a study that was published eight years ago. But beyond that point, these are eight years in which the awareness around veganism and the accessibility around veganism has grown exponentially. So fundamentally, the entire environment and conversation around veganism is so different now to how it was eight years ago. For example, I wasn't vegan eight years ago, and I'm sure most of you who are vegan who are watching this video also weren't vegan eight years ago. So citing a study from a time when being vegan was so much harder than it is today seems like a pretty cynical and disingenuous way of trying to make the argument that we should loosen the definition of veganism. Plus, only 1,313 people actually completed the survey that was used in the study, and out of all of those people, well, only 183 of them were current or former vegans. So the argument for loosening the definition of veganism comes from an outdated study with a small sample size of which only 14% of that already small sample size had anything to do with eating a plant-based diet. As you can see, we're already off to a good start. And actually, when you break down the study and compare the recidivism rates of vegetarians versus vegans, well, actually 86% of vegetarians went back compared to 70% of those eating a plant-based diet. Now, this is interesting because the reason this study is being cited is to try and make the claim that being vegan is too strict. However, ironically, the study study shows that those who were following the less strict and less restrictive diet had higher rates of recidivism than those following a plant-based diet. So even though this study is a poor piece of evidence, if anything, it actually contradicts the point the author of this article is trying to make. And just before we move past this particular point, of the former vegetarians and plant-based eaters in the study who said they were interested in readopting the lifestyle at some point, 45% of them said they would do so if vegan food was tastier and more convenient. 21% said they would do so if they were given more motivation to do it. And 19% said they would do so if it was easier socially. Now, all of this seems to suggest to me that our focus shouldn't be on trying to make the definition of veganism looser than it currently is. 
Really, our focus should be on making vegan food more accessible and convenient and tasty and affordable. And we should make sure that being vegan is a socially acceptable and normal thing to do so people don't feel isolated within their social groups. And importantly, we should be giving people the reasons to be vegan so they're given that motivation to begin with and that motivation sticks with them when they go vegan, which means that they stay vegan. So perhaps we should be giving people more motivation to go vegan instead of, as the author of this article did in a recent Reddit AMA, tell people who are expressing an interest in veganism that they don't actually have to go vegan. So then we are presented with this tweet. It's bad that being 90% vegan or vegetarian means that you're no longer in the club. It would be a lot more valuable if 50% of people were vegan half the time than if just 2% of the population were vegan 100% of the time. But this just creates a false dichotomy. After all, these aren't the only two options that we have in front of us. Of course, what's said in the tweet is true, but that's just because of the way that it's been framed. It creates the illusion of an argument, but you could use the logic in this tweet to just about describe anything. For example, it would be better if 50% of dog abusers stopped abusing their dogs 50% of the time than if 2% of dog abusers stopped abusing their dogs 100% of the time. And of course that's true because it would reduce dog abuse overall, but it's not a good ethical compromise. And we certainly shouldn't advocate for that because ultimately the best scenario would be 100% of dog abusers not abusing their dogs 100% of the time. And at the end of the day, if we tell people that reducing their animal product consumption by 50% is the aspiration, then that's the best that we will get. But if something is wrong, then it's wrong and it should be presented as such. Why are we trying to create ethical compromises? And what kind of message does this send to other people? Yeah, sure, animal suffering is bad, but it's not that bad. Or yeah, sure, gas chambers are bad, but if we reduce gas chamber use by 50%, then gas chambers all of a sudden become okay. The animals have one movement, that's it. So just leave it alone. The answer to all of this isn't to loosen the definition of what being a vegan means. It's for us to become better advocates for veganism and do so in a more effective way. If we can't advocate for veganism in an effective way that stays true to the principles of veganism, well, that's our fault, not the animal's fault. So the onus is on us to get better at communicating our principles, not to loosen the definition of veganism because it's easier to tell someone they can still eat a bacon sandwich and pat themselves on the back at the same time. In life, there are hard truths, but those truths are still truths, even though they may be hard. And so we shouldn't compromise on these hard truths just because it's more comfortable to tell easy lies. And telling people that it's okay to force pigs into gas chambers as long as we only do it 50% of the time is a lie. And here's a question that is never answered. How far should the definition of veganism be loosened? And look, I get that people make their way to veganism in different ways. I, for example, went vegetarian first before I went vegan. So this isn't a criticism of people making changes with the aspiration of becoming vegan. And of course, if someone has just gone vegan and they give into a craving or a temptation around a non-vegan friend and eat a slice of non-vegan pizza, of course that should be met with understanding. But what if the next night they then order a whole non-vegan pizza to themselves? And then what if they start eating one steak and one chicken burger a week and using cow's milk every day on their cereal? How far should the definition of veganism be loosened? Is eating meat three times a week acceptable, but four times a week not? How many animal products can you eat and call yourself a vegan in this world of loose veganism? And then wherever that line is, well, why is the line there? Why is it morally justified to harm that number of animals unnecessarily, but not more? People are always more than happy to say that vegans are too militant or too strict, but they can never define the line where veganism no longer becomes too militant or too strict. And that's the problem with not having clear definitions for words. If they have no meaning, then they mean nothing. In this world of loose veganism, veganism ceases to exist because it becomes the same as flexitarian. And after all, isn't that kind of the point? We already have a word for someone who consumes animal products, but just a little bit less than the average. Ultimately, veganism means what veganism means because that's what veganism means. If we change the definition of veganism, it's no longer veganism. It simply becomes being a flexitarian. And with all due respect to Eric Adams, who I greatly admire for championing vegan meals in schools across New York City, 
He didn't choose to eat fish because veganism is too militant or too strict. He ate fish because he wanted to eat fish. When he sat in the restaurant and ordered what he ordered, he ordered it because that's what he wanted to order. So the idea that we should loosen the definition of veganism because in a situation where he didn't have to, Eric Adams ordered fish because he wanted to is obviously absolutely ridiculous. And when you think about the argument that this article is trying to make, they're inherently saying that it's our fault, that it's vegans' fault for the decision that Eric Adams made in that moment. Not even Eric Adams would try and blame us for the fact that he chose to eat fish in that moment. And yet the author of this piece is saying that it's our fault because we as vegans make veganism too militant and too strict, and we should loosen the definition of veganism and in effect cause more harm to animals because we remove the only social justice movement that's actually trying to fight for their well-being and on their behalf. So that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of what I had to say and also what you think of the article itself. Now, it always fills me with such disappointment when I see arguments such as the one put forward in the article, because really it's selling ourselves short. We can do better and we should be held to account to do better. Do we really want the aspiration to be a world where unnecessary animal suffering still exists? When we can create a world where unnecessary animal suffering doesn't exist? Is that really the aspiration that we should have? I don't think so. I think that we as humans can do better and should do better. All right, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next video.